show you how to do the depth gauge drawing. Actually, there are four drawings that need to be completed for the depth gauge. You have to draw each part individually. So you have a base, you have a handle, you have the depth rod, and you have the knurled screw. All four of these need to be done on separate part drawings. Now, um, if you look, the measurements all given are in inches. So I'm just going to go to English and the standard inch template. Since we're not 3D printing this, we can do it in inches and that'll be fine. Um, we're going to start a new sketch on the XY plane. And as I draw this, I want to make sure that I'm at zero degrees and I'm going to give it my measurements so that I get everything correct. Oh, I told it 30. There we go. Three is a little bit better. 0.25. The height, and then I'm going to go up from my midpoint right here at this green dot. I'm going to go up an inch, and I'm going to go over three eighths. And then I'm going to go over three eighths this way because that gives me find helps me find this point here. Let me find my top 0.25. Not liking my enter. Then I can just connect these lines from the corners and everything should be good. Actually, this middle line I can delete and finish the sketch. Now we're ready to extrude. And my thickness is 0.25. I'm going to start a new sketch on top. And we're going to drill a hole. So, actually, to do that, I don't need the sketch. Oops, we're going to delete. The, no, I didn't want that. Finish the sketch and delete the sketch. There we go. We're just going to do the hole. And my hole is going to be, um, we're going to just go on linear on this face. And then we have some things we can set up. We're going to do a counter bore. So if you look, my top diameter is 0.375. The depth is 0.4375. So let's change that. Okay. Um, I am an eighth inch down here at the bottom for that diameter. And it should go all the way through. I need to tell it where it needs to be located. So I'm going to reference this face. And I'm going to tell it 0.375 to get it centered up. And then from this, this one will go from this face, 0.375. That gets me where I need to be. Okay. So now you can see that I, this hole goes down a certain distance, it stops, and then there's a small hole that goes all the rest of the way through, just like that. Okay, so that's how that would work. If you missed some of that, you may have to rewind it and see what's going on. Um, we're going to do another hole on the front here. I'm going to place a hole. This one will go all, um, it will be just drilled. It's not going to go all the way through. It's going to have a distance. My depth is going to be 0.625. And I'm going to apply threads to it. I guess I should tell it what face first, huh? Yeah. Up there. Okay, so now I can select the face. And I'm going to tell it depth of, I'm going all the way through a depth of 0.625, which is 5 eighths. Um, my threads. I want the threads to go all the way as well. So we'll just tell that 0.65. Um, termination distance, I've got that set up. Threads. Um, we need to tell it what type of threads down here. We are quarter inch 20 UNC. So this is a quarter inch. I've got a five. I should be able to go to. Interesting. 
0.25 right there. There we are, quarter inch 20 UNC. Creates my threads. Now I need to tell it where I want to locate it. We are coming up from the bottom, 3 eighths, 0.375. My other reference is right here. And I need to be 1.5 to get that centered up. Okay, so that creates my thread. Now, <clears throat> the uh, if we were to 3D print this off, it will not print these threads. These are just a thread representation. There is a way I can uh, create these threads. I've downloaded, it's called Cool Orange, the thread modeler. And so what you would need to do is select the actual profile. And I've done this before, I can't remember how it works. But anyway, I select the thread profile and it will actually have to do it over here. There we go. Maybe not. Anyway, and that will actually create threads that can be 3D printed. We're not worried about that for now because we're not going to be printing these off. But if you did need to do threads, we would have to use the cool orange um, thread modeler, which I have here. It's also on the desktop computer in the classroom. So that is basically why, what I wanted to show you for drilling this counterbore and for placing the threads. There is also on the screw, there is some knurling. And um, I will show you how that works. Let's just go create a new part real quick. And we've got a circle, diameter of 0.5. We can extrude this out, 0.25. Maybe computer's kind of slow for some reason. 0.25. Okay, notice it has chamfers. Okay, my chamfer is 132nd. So I would tell it 1 32nd. I'm going to go both edges, tell it OK. Now we need to add our knurling. And I'm trying to remember how I do that. Give me a second to find where I add my knurling. Basically, just a texture. I'm going to select this outside edge. And I come up here where it says default. That's my default coloring. There's all different types of things that you can color. And there's a knurled 45 right here. It doesn't look quite right. So let's see what's going on. I don't know if there's a scaling or what. I've done this in the past and haven't had any trouble. So let's go back. Hmm. I'm going to have to pause again and take a look. Pretty simple. You go to view. If you change your visual style to realistic, um, there are some different options here. Realistic tends to work the best. So that's what we'll go with for this. I changed my visual style to realistic, and now I've got the knurled, um, knurled look to it. To put the threads on there, you just add a new sketch to one of the faces. You would draw a quarter inch circle, extrude that out, and then add threads to it, just, just like this. There we go. Okay, add your threads and then your screw is finished. So pretty simple. Um, there's just a few different steps that we haven't done before. So you can see how that works. Now, um, I would need to save these parts. So let me save as, or just save it. Uh, I'm going to put these on my desktop. Call this the screw. I also have. This is the base. File. And here I'm going to create a new assembly. And I think I can bring these in. I don't know that I have to have them as components. Let's see here. There's my base. If I can place my base. And then, okay, I'm going to place another part, which is my screw. I'm 
this is where you have to add constraints. And constraints are a little bit tricky. So I want to make this face to right here. And it's kind of one of those deals you just kind of have to work with until you get it figured out how you're going to make it work. There's no way to rotate. They don't give you the option to rotate this. I don't believe you can free rotate and free move. But that takes you off of where you want to be. So you really have to work with constraints. And I think I want to go with the mate. I want to mate. This face, this, there we go. And then I want to mate and apply that. I'm going to have a new one with the center of this. Goes with that. There we go. If I wanted to put this in there, I would actually mate. Um, the back side of this screw. So we could make the back side of this screw, possibly. Let's just tell it OK. See if they'll allow me to do a new constraint here. There we go. This face with this face. No, because I've already got one there. So I would need to undo my first one. I'm going to constrain this face right here with this thing that rotates it around. And then I would go from, I can find it. There we go. With the center. There we go. That's what I wanted. And then you would add your other parts and constrain them together to make everything line up like it should. So this would show the screw as it's actually threaded in. Okay, pretty simple. I want to go back to realistic. You'll see my knurling on there. And um, so when you're finished, you will actually submit this assembly. I believe uh, I believe you can submit it as an assembly. Um, we can create a new component. Yeah, I'm I don't do a lot with assembly, so we're going to practice with this one and see what we get. Um, Send me an assembly. If it doesn't work out, we may have to try to put this into a drawing. Let's see what we get. I'm going to save my assembly one. I'm going to go to a new uh, file, new drawing, and my base. Okay, it does let me use the assembly one to one scale. So I like that. I can project different views. It will give me everything perfect. So, yeah, so we can use our assembly view. I like it. We'll create that. Probably change our paper size so that we're, let's go with a B. B is going to be our best option. So, yeah, send me the drawing. And, um, this is what I'm after when we're finished, is your drawing. It should have more parts than this. You should have the handle and the depth rod going through it, also with a um, projection up here. There we go. With these four views. So this is what I'm after, B-sized paper. I know I was kind of a rough video, kind of stumbled my way through it, but you hopefully understand what's going on for, uh, for the depth gauge drawing. And you should have, uh, you should have a PDF in Schoology of all of the measurements that you'll need to work off of those. So um, shouldn't be too difficult for you.